Hey everybody, this is Ardu, and welcome back to another exciting episode of Let's Play Darkest Dungeon Crimson Court. And now that we've got ourselves a party of four with some pretty shoddy abilities, to be entirely honest, uh, we're going to have to get into our first dungeon, which might well give us doom and misfortune to deal with. Again, very much not how I'd like to have a Vestal or a Plague Doctor kitted up, but we have no choices when it comes to, oh golly gosh, there's the courtyard. No choice but to step on into a single short apprentice match. And let's get provisioned and started. The cost of preparedness measured now in gold, later in blood. Laudanum. Don't know what that does. I'll bring one along. Also bring a key and a shovel and torches and food. More of all might be worthwhile, but the money situation, well, it's better to be safe than sorry, especially when your party mix is not amazing. Right, let's call that done, and let's get in there. Laudanum. I wonder what Laudanum does. Soothes the mind. Let's do a proper read of that as soon as we get into the dungeon. We'll just be polite and diligent and wait for the announcer to have his say. And before I get started, I just want to thank you guys for watching this video. Uh, I'm going to have a lot of fun making this series. I hope you guys are going to have a lot of fun watching it. If you like what you see as we go through things, hit that like button. I'd really appreciate the love. No? Nothing to say? Okay. Let's do a quick check of Laudanum. A soothing tincture to inure one's mind against the horrors of the dark. Alright, we'll have to figure out how that applies through. It looks like it's only going to be actionable during combat, so we'll have to see what happens. It could be a stress debuff. Uh, sorry, it could be a stress buff. I'm not sure, but let's press on regardless. We have our first cure of the game, a single torch. Don't Fighting need to worry about it. is only the first test. Now it must be carried home. I'm going to worry about Radiant Light because, again, these guys are just so awful and I want to surprise monsters if I can. First ring battle with two rabble and this shouldn't be too much of a problem at all. We'll open things up with a stun <coughs> just to make sure we maintain map control as much as we're able to. And actually, while this is starting up, what I might just do is get a timer going so I can keep my promise and make sure that we are not running too long. Okay, I'm not running too short, more importantly. Let's look at a torch buff and damage run, because it's the best of all available options to do high damage and not too shabby the there at all. The promise of safety. Probably the best chance for damage with pistol shot, so we'll take it. Another abomination cleansed from our lands. And then a smite should probably finish the job, because these guys are unholy and crusaders we are axe. Fiend. Nice. and driven into the mud. Just checking for blight resistances here, and I'm guessing we're going to have none of them. All right, let's try this on the Crusader. Contents are mine, and we get a nice mix of items there. Get a scout in as well, which is fantastic. That shovel will come in handy. Lovely, lovely stuff. This is very Even much the game. The cold stone seems bent on preventing passage. Mm, cold stone passage. All right, we're in Radiant Light, which is not a problem for the moment. We have an Enchantress to worry about, and she will absolutely be the focus of our attacks because we have no ability to address stress in any other way. Let's just try and do that stun shuffle and see if we can get her to the front rows, where she can be promptly and quickly killed by our Crusader. Uh, open Vein might be the best trick for damage at this stage, uh, and it's looking like that's going to be a definite hell's yes. Only 20% chance to resist, 5 damage. Oh, and resist the bleed. Okay, that, that will happen sometimes. Let's just keep the pain train going on this Acolyte, because we need her dead. Um, because we really don't have the stamina for uh, stealth. Five damage with the Vestal, and she finally has a job to do. Great dodge the Crusader, and let's see how this plays out. Smite should get the kill. Could try Zelf's Accusation, which should get the kill, plus do additional damage, and that's going to be the best of all available options, which is, after all, what this game is all about. Acolytes deaded. Bone Soldier is close to being there as well. Pistol Shot looks like it's going to be a pretty good solution for that. Highest damage I can... Well, actually, highest damage I can possibly do is going to be with an open vein, despite the fact that the damage will be wasted. So let's just do that now. Six damage. Not quite enough to get the kill, but that is just fine. In the... Mm, light resist. 
pretty weak, but uh, I think a shuffle might be more more in action, particularly because it clears corpses. So let's stun the guy with the highest damage potential. Resisted that stun, unfortunately. Even with the stun of resisted 25, that's that's ridiculous, but that's okay. Could get the kill. Could heal some damage. I'm going to heal some damage at this stage. Four up, which isn't too shabby at all for this stage of the game. Up the night for two. No walking furries there at all. Drop his Zealous Accusation to get a kill. And damage down the soldier. Nicely done. And we should be able to follow through for the kill now. Well, stun first. Always try and keep control of the battle. Uh, and again, open vein is the only shot we have. So, well, with damage. And... This expedition at least promises success. And we're doing pretty well. Uh, again, just keep map control. We could be a completionist about this. We have to explore 90% of rooms, which means we can afford to leave a room behind. But since there is a Kuro in both of them, we will probably do a double back at some stage. Let's start off, though, with focusing on the treasure room to see what we can see. Uh, and just one Kuro there. Yes, your Kleptomania kicks in, and that's going to be frustrating. Got to cure you of that. Yeah, like... Yeah, the desire to steal things compulsively. Goddamn kleptomania. Hate kleptomania. Alright. Brawler, soldier, and an acolyte. We get the jump on them with a surprise, and we are going to be in a happy place to do some damage. Let's start by stunning the acolyte. Who is my biggest concern because of the stress that she can do to us all. Next up, we're going to keep focusing down on her with an open vein because she can bleed, and there's no reason why we wouldn't want her to. Nice. Alright, two damage in the next turn. We can probably, yeah, get the kill and spread the love. Let's do just that. Lovely work. Next up, let's try and debuff this brawler. Oh, beautiful critical hit. Seven. And Torch goes up to a hundred graveyard slash on the Crusader. Who dodges like a boss. Like an absolute boss. Rent the old god drops though. For six is a crit and everyone takes a bit of stress. There is some bleed in train, and so that crusader is going to need to use up my bandage. That's okay. That's what bandages are for. Let's open a vein. No more unhappiness from that particular brawler. We'll drop a heal on the crusader just to make sure that we're staying in good condition, especially with a bit more damage yet to come. Could cure that bleed though remotely. Or I could stun the enemy, and stun the enemy is the thing that makes sense because it also clears corpses. Lovely jubbly. That is the best call of all the available ones we can make. Let's take care of that. That Laudanum still is not useful. I haven't been looking to find ways to use it, but that is not applicable to anyone yet. Alright, that's fine. Let's drop a smite. Seven damage. Three left to go, and we're going to easily clean this up in the next turn. Uh, yeah. Done and done, Now... Laudanum could be conditional on higher levels of stress. I don't... It could be only useful when you're in full dark. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what it is. I might need to look it up. I don't want to look it up. Um, probably not going to buy it again for a while until I figure out what it does. Um, but yeah, let's see how we go. Open a chest. Here's some keys. And a pretty nice spread of things that are worth some money and things will come in useful. Deeds are super, super critical at the early stage of at this early stage of the game. Do you have a trap coming up, which we aren't going to forget about and have a quick look. 90% chance to some, 60, 50. Yeah, let's just not take the risk. Don't want to take the stress, don't want to take the damage. Let's just keep things safe and gentle at this very nascent stage of our adventures in the darkest dungeon. Pressing on, we'll have a quick look to, well, again, just on the trap and a curio room. Disarm that trap again with as little risk as possible. Torch situation is fine, food situation is fine. Surprised I've had a food check yet, to be honest. But it is only a short dungeon and we haven't really gone that far. Two soldiers and an obelisk. Obelisks are the absolute devil. I loathe them with every fiber of my being, but unfortunately I cannot kill this obelisk promptly. So I have to find a different means of doing damage. I could spread the love, and I think spreading the love might be a worthwhile thing because I can follow up with a zealous accusation from the Crusader. Let's drop that now. Two, three, and four. Not too shabby. Could be better, but I'm not going to complain inordinately. 
will do a stun shuffle though to keep that obelisk out of action. Resists the move, but the stun does take, which gives me a bit of breathing room because I hate taking bolts to the face. We'll drop an elimination on the Chappie with the lowest life, 2 to 4 damage, which should put him in a pretty good place to get killed. Miss though. Still get the torchlight, but I don't love that miss. Do not love it at all. 7 damage taken on the Vestal, which will require some restitution and healing. Remote chance of a kill, and I don't love those odds. This is much better. Let's deny them a turn. There we go. Executed with impunity. Nicely done. Following on from that, we can look at dropping a pistol shot. Actually, this does... It's just weird that open vein at low levels does more damage. It's just an anomaly of the game, but we'll take advantage of it regardless. Three hit points left, and no other options, unfortunately. Quarrel to the face in the back row. Yep, that's how it goes. Um, and with that seven damage, we have to look for better options. Let's try a stun shuffle again, if only just to clear out some corpses. Well, that stun is going to count for a whole lot. Going to focus a heal probably on the Plague Doctor, who's the squishiest. It's a lovely heal of five. No complaints there. Now, can we get a kill with the Zealous Accusation? Yeah, we're pretty much guaranteed, provided we hit, so let's just do that now. Boom. Good damage spread there. Five hit points left on the Arbalist, and I think we've got the kill. Dunsky. Could have spent a turn faffing, but I'm not too worried about that because I have an excess of food. This Holy Fountain, again, I can't remember the use for because I don't spend much time in the ruins. Ignore everything there. Oh my god, I left my desktop completely open. Let's refer to Karamazula's cheat sheet. And that was a Holy Fountain in the ruins, or an Ultra of Light Holy Fountain. Stress, HP, and status. Okay. Or treasure. Do we have much stress? Not really. Let's just go for the treasure. Reinvigorates the hero. Gives me a heal. Reduces some stress. That's just good for everyone. Fan. Blooming tastic. We have one Kuro, and you know what? Given the early stage of things and the good torch situation, I think I'm going to go for it. Could be something as useless as a sack. Yes, it is. And Kleptomania kicks in to make it irrelevant. Could have used those busts. Thanks, Reynold. I'm going to have to cure that Kleptomania with, you know, needles in the eyeballs, or in this case, needles in the eye slits at my soon as possible convenience, but it's going to be a few turns yet before I get myself access to the sanitarium, let alone have the free monies to do anything worthwhile with it. And if that kleptomania quirk gets locked in, no it isn't, thank goodness. Alright, that is fine, 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 fine. Pressing on and doubling back, we have one more room that to take, one more room again just to be a completionist. And let's carry things through. Episodes only run for about 13, 14 minutes at the stage, so I think we should be fine to run a longer and pack in two adventures rather than just the one. Golly gosh, let's press on and get on through. Another sack, let's get it before you kleptomaniac out. Groove, that's weird. That's really more food than I want or need. I'm going to need the portraits more than I'm going to need the nibbles. So let's enjoy these middles while we have them because they are overkill, and press on forward. No more scouting information. Torchlight is running just a smidge low. There's that food check. That was so overdue. All right, let's torch up and get in there. Is struck. A blazing star is born. We're going to keep going, because there's treasure to be found, and Lord knows we have the shovels. Um, may as well get my money's worth from those. Uh, pressing on through into the final battle. It's not necessary for us to do this, and I might be suffering from a bad case to just one more purchase. room. Spirits are lifted, and purpose is made but I like treasure. Okay, we get the surprise. This is probably the hardest the hardest part of your carp against with a obelisk, a courtier, a soldier, and a defender, but you know, that all that all besides, we can do some decent damage in place. No chance for insta-kills on anyone, unfortunately. What we can probably do is open up with an open vein to get a good chance of knocking out that bone soldier with a complimentary attack from the Crusader. So let's get that started. Seven damage done and done. We're going to be the Vestal next up and we can drop an illumination on anyone that we like. And I quite like an illumination on that bone soldier or possibly... No, the obelisk. Obelisk. Boom. Your dodge is debuffed, which is fantastic. You're my main target when it comes to back row damage. Let's drop some blights. 
Blights are awesome. It's the first time we've ever gotten our full money's worth from them. Four damage. This guy will take a few turns to die. Zelf's accusation should take care of that Bone Soldier, though, and get some complimentary damage on the Defender as well. Boom shakalaka. One is down. Next up, we're probably going to want to be doing a stun. Great dodge, Highwayman. Great dodge. Great dodge. Tempting Goblin will drop a bit of stress. Yep, and a bit of damage as well on him. And then let's see where that arrow lands. Quarrel. Crit! Oh, it's going to be painful. But we can recover. We can recover. Quarrel again. Another five damage. This is our last battle, so we're not too concerned about hit points. What we are concerned about, though, is making sure that we get these guys dead in their next turn. Five HP left, four damage from Blight, but the Blight does stack. Blight does stack, and that Courtier is dead in her next turn, which is just fine by me. Could look at trying to debuff somebody, could look at trying to heal myself. And I'm going to go for the crit healer six, take care of some of that stress we picked up. And that Courtier is gone, that Obelisk will be gone as well. And the next choice we have to make is what we're going to do that defender, and the obvious call is to kill him. Slowly but surely, kill him. Axe Blade drops, 3 damage, and let's respond with Smite for 9, he's dead and buried, well not quite buried, he's a corpse on the floor, but we're happy to take that corpse on the floor and do with it as we wish, uh, pistol shot on the back row to finish things off, and we are free and clear. Defender so, Seal, so clearly and nice, well, we can drop that on him right now. Let's oops, drop that key in place as well and see what heirlooms we get out of this bag and some busts and deeds. Pretty happy with that. Dungeon well completed. Not too much stress accrued. And yeah, we've been making the, the best use of our parties given their somewhat limited abilities at this stage. Again, I just need to really change up how that Vestal is kitted to get the most use out of her and also change up the abilities on the Plague Doctor. They're not too bad as things stand, but I prefer to have double stuns and double bites and then my choice about other abilities rather than the other way around. In any case, we've picked up roughly seven to 8,000 gold, uh, 12 crests, 6 deeds, 1 portrait, and 4 busts, as well as getting some of our guys upgraded to level 1, which is just fine by me. Natural Swing, plus 5 Accuracy. Reynold is rocking some amazing positive quirks to, you know, counterbalance his freaking terrible kleptomania. And Dismiss has picked up a Lazy Eye, which we're going to have to deal with pretty promptly, as well as Wield Scrounger, and Maynet has Thick Blooded, which is not too shabby at all, and will come in very, very handy. There is a great horror beneath the manor. A crawling chaos that must be destroyed. Okie dokie, so we have a few upgrades. Uh, Sanitarium isn't quite unlocked as yet, but we will have a quick moment to look at the Abbey the to get rid of that asterisk. The pews set straight. Now, the Abbey calls to the faithful. I prefer to unlock the tavern. Fresh kegs, cards, and curtained rooms promise solace to the weary and broken alike. Mostly because, you know, I'm quite church of us, and, um, wow, all right, these are some interesting recruits. We've got 12 slots available to us, so we may as well pick them up. Don't really love Elusive, them. Evasive. Persistent. Mm. Righteous traits for a rogue. Alright, so... Yeah, not amazing abilities on the Isabelis, but we'll grab them regardless with the intention of, well, firing them as soon as something better comes along. Bandage and pillage. The dancing steps of war. Gonna keep my deeds in the bank just because I don't quite need to spend this yet. I can upgrade really quickly and easily to roster 16 if I do run the spaces, but I have three guys coming in next turn, which will only top me out to 12, and that's kind of all the all the money I can I can spend, really. Uh, what I will do, though, is unlock all, sorry, unequip all the trinkets. Let's just chuck them by habit. Let's look for the next quest we can make as we re-enter the ruins. Let's have a look-see. Uh, short Apprentice for Deeds and a Plague Doctor. Yeah, stun skill chance is going to be pretty useful. Leper, don't have one yet. And that's also a short medium for an Occultist, which will be a while before they drop. Hound Master, that's pretty useful as well. But let's let's pick up this Plague Doctor Witch Vial. That is, that is pretty darn good. 
Unfortunately, no upgrades can be put on our party at this stage, but that is just fine by me. Let's look at the Curios we're rocking and Crusader Seal. Look, reduce critical chance, but I will take the extra protection to make you a bit more survivable. Move Charm, move resist and less speed. Well, the Crusader is going to come out last regardless. But I think I can probably leave that behind, to be entirely honest. I'm not going to see an amazing amount of use for that one. Let's get in there one more time. Let's leave behind the Lord in this instance, because we just don't know what it does. And that's kind of a problem. Medicinal herbs will bring one. Uh, two keys, one shovel, stack of torches, stack of food, and that should do us plenty. Let's get in there. I hope I made the right call with only bringing the one shovel. Actually, did I bring one shovel, or two. I thought I wanted to bring two. Maybe I pushed the wrong button. We'll see. In any case, thank you again, guys, for sticking with me as we get into this second dungeon in the Crimson Court. Of course, we're not in the Crimson Case Court. The the of your lineage once oh, familiar. darn. Now, Oren. Took two keys rather than two shovels. That's alright. I got confused. These things happen. Need to scout 90% of rooms. Obviously, that pack of stack of books, we can leave the heck alone. Which is the, uh, it never ends well. Like, it's just not worth it. Trap drops and it takes Ancient away 6 HP and adds a and wait whole mess of stress. Unsprung and thirsting for blood. This will be our only double back, though, in this map, so everything else should be proceeding quite clearly. Bone Courtier, Acolyte Soldier, and a Brawler for us to deal with, and unfortunately, we don't have any chain attacks beyond Blight, which we're going to have to drop. It's our best bet here. Let's get it started immediately. Right, lights are down. Uh, again, we don't have the surprise on these guys. We're going to have to take a couple of hits here, and sanity is in question, especially on the Plague Doctor, who's rocking a massive 46 stress at the moment. Eldritch push gets dodged like a boss. And next up, we need to make our calls. Pistol shot will get this lassie either dead or close to dead in the next turn, which works just fine for me. In fact, let's do that right now. Okay, four damage, okay. The Acolyte is dead in the next turn. Not soon enough, but soon enough for me. Bone Soldier, we have a chance for to kill, and we should take it. Boom! On, Love me the insta-kills. Rent the old gods. The Hyman gets dodged because he's just a lovely slippery sucker. Let's drop a heal on the Plague Doctor, though, because she is looking squishy. Can't really tell the gender of the Plague Doctor, not that it's particularly important, but it's just nice to know in some instances. I'm going to call her a she because she looks... she has skinny arms. That's, that's, that's my reasoning there. That's my reasoning there. All right, open vein is probably our best port of call. Again, this chap is dead in her next turn. So is this courtier, so there's nothing to worry about there. Let's just focus down on the brawler, where the most good slash bad can be done. Lee does take the two damage, which is just fine by me. A few turns, a few turns in the mix. It's going to be... Oh, can't stun him. Can't really do much, to be honest. I can buff damage and speed, though. That's not going to be a bad on the Crusader. I'd rather have an attack which hit the front ranks, but I'll take the damage if it's the only thing I can have. Oh, miss. But we get the torch regardless, and that bleed kicks in. Rent the old gods of the Crusader. Two damage. And a bleed as well. Which is regrettable, but we can survive this. Boom. And that buff really helped out a lot. And we are free and clear. Bust gold and a key, which puts our key level to absurd loco over overstocked. That's okay. Nice pile of gold. Waiting to be spent. What do we have? Corridor battle and an empty. Alrighty then, let's press on. We've got some bleed damage to come. We're probably gonna wait for the food, the hunger checks to come through to get that healing done. If not, we'll take care of it with the Vestal in her turn. We get into combat very shortly. But let's press on through and see how we do. That sack will pick up straight away. And Clementine did not kick in. Is only the first test. Now it must be carried home. And we start the combat in Radiant and get the surprise as well, which is absolutely fantastic. Gonna be opening up with a heal on the Crusader, just because. And next up, we are gonna be looking for the best damage potential we've got. We could try and get a pistol shot through to complement a blight, but the odds aren't amazingly in our favor. We have a chance for an insta-kill on the Bone Rabble, and we'll take it. Alright, it's one turn denied. Not too shabby. Go for the stun on the Courtier, because we don't, we don't need that stress. We don't need those problems. 
also takes care of Colts, which puts me in a great place to smite that rebel to death. Staying calm, clear, and in control. That's a happy Ardoom for sure. Let's get a bleed going here. No chance it's going to take, but the attack does have the highest damage potential. Next up, we are going to be looking for our best of all available options, and I'm thinking it's going to be a low point heal somewhere. Uh, he's got an action though. Can't stun. Alright, let's just do a low point heal. Faffing, faffing away. Knife in the dark. Two damage. No ill effects and no concerns there. Three hit points shy, three hit points shy. Let's drop a heal right here, and I'm pretty confident that the Crusader will take out this court here. Oh! Okay. It's alright. I was overconfident. It's a slow and insidious killer. I, literally, my words proved that the game was due to punish me. Or at least over due to punish me. But no lasting effects. No lasting effects. Let's get that torch light going and enter this empty room. Let's see if we can scout for the next tranche of adventure. The answer is a clear and definitive no. Potentially a nine, or a yet, or a lo, or a no. No in any language. Even the cold stone seems bent on preventing passage. Empty sack. Again, that always feels dirty when I say it out loud. I don't know why I keep saying it. It's just a... Yeah, it's a silly thing. Alright, scouting through, and we've got a corridor battle and some curios, followed by a treasure room. Which is just fine by me. Do not mind that extra torch. In fact, I'll burn it straight out of the sconce. Which is what you keep torches in, by the way. It's, it's a beautiful word. Like tenebrous. Could be a tenebrous sconce. Even. Right, maggots and a spitter. I'm gonna focus down on that spider because spiders can be nasty as all get out. No chance for an insta kill on him though, which is of concern for me. Uh, remote chance for an insta kill. Let's take the chance. Boom. Okay, so grateful. Do not want to be taking flights right now, especially not with our health. Sorry, with our resistances in in, in, in the shape that they're in. No chance for an insta kill. So let's focus on heals. Crit for six. That will take care of some stress as well, which is lovely in my books. Go for a stun shuffle because why would I not deny them a turn? Well, should have looked at their resistances because that stun resist is like a hundred, and that was a complete waste. Chance for two insta kills. This is a guarantee of one. Let's take a chance. Boom! All right, that that worked out. That worked out nicely. We are expedition at least promises success. Incredibly oversupplied for keys. Those holy waters probably aren't going to be used at all, but we'll see how we go. It is torches that give us... Go! Nice. Hunger check. That's timely. Let's go in here and perform some alchemy. Done. Again, it's disinfecting. It's medicinal herbs. Disinfect that. As always. Some things are... I don't have to refer to the cheat sheet every time. It just... It feels like almost all the time. Right, and a blood letter, a cutthroat, and a fusilier, with surprise on them as well to give me an early advantage. I'm going to start dropping blights in place because why would I not get their damage reduced? Stuns could also be useful, but my gosh, double blight, that's a good way to start the day. Could probably follow up with a pistol shot to get us close to a kill. Yeah, I can take out that fusilier in its first turn, I will. Oh, dodge! Darn it. Darn it, darn it, darn it. I can try again. No. Ah, actually, damage somewhere, because our heal situation is pretty good. Let's try that Fusilier again. Five damage and a debuff for dodge. That's fine. Not much you can do with the Crusader beyond trying for a stun. And these haven't worked out before, but I'm going to try them. Two damage and resist. Damn. Okay, look, let's just do the, let's do the best damage we can. Those stuns never work out. I don't know why I do them. Point black shot. Nine damage. Okay, so I need to focus some healing on the Crusader because he, he is he is smarting. Shank does four as well, so absolutely the focus for heals with that bleed in place. And let's start doing some meaningful damage in place. We're out of position, so all we can do is drop the bleeds. The bleeds have a pretty good chance. Nine damage is pretty healthy. Plus six more to come, which is not too bad. I can cure this blight though and prevent those extra diseases from happening, or I can guarantee a kill. Let's guarantee some kills. Blight resist. He's dead. He's dead. 
Alright, so less to worry about here. Let's drop a focus team on the Crusader. Try and claw back from the Abyss. Boom. That's exactly what I want to see. And it's one action. We drop a rain of whips. Yep, yep. Three dodges, one hit, and does a bleed take? No. Excellent. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Well, alright, let's drop a smite. 11 damage. Not too shabby at all. Follow things on with another open vein. Or six plus extra bleed. This chap is not quite dead in his own turn. I will instead spend the. I can. No. Let's take care of that bleed. Let's focus a heal. This is our turn for faffing, and we may as well use it. Uh, Crusader can finish him off. Beautifully done. We'll hold on to that disease charm. We're definitely not going to equip it because I do not want to reduce my dodge on level 1s. That's just loco. Hidden compartment and sapphire, holy water and jade. Lovely stuff. That holy water I might just actually use some of and only keep the one behind for. Pressing on and let's see what we have here. Stash of heirlooms. And we're going to have to take some stress on this one, unfortunately. Yep. That's a thing. Ah, trap! That is also a thing. We are looking in pretty shoddy condition. Only one torch left. Enough food for two food checks, but an empty room, no scouting, and uh, yeah, things are looking a bit serious. Now, might actually have to lose a turn with the Vestal, which is slightly terrifying for me. Never hidden. Right, a few more crests. And that is our last torch gone. Let's get in and see what we have to see. Alright. We're not looking in an incredible way. But it's just empties and a curio. So I will reduce the stress on my high highwayman at least. Alright, he's reduced by eight. Check out what this curio is. Stack of books. Let's just get out of here. Alright. So we took a lot of stress. That's going to take us a while to recover from. Depending on who we recruit in the stagecoach, we might need to actually just press on and just live with it. Picked up roughly 9,000 gold, which is going to come in very, very handy. Four crests, three deeds, and eight busts. All worthy additions. No upgrades as yet, but let's check out these quirks. I'm just going to sneeze, excuse me. Goodness, I hope that didn't come on the microphone. Um... Nocturnal negative speed of torches above 75. That sucks. Um, but speed can only go down as low as zero. So, yeah, he's just going to be slow. Deviant tastes. That's going to be a problem given stress issues. Thanophobia is a bit of a problem, but doesn't kick in too often. Steady is fantastic. So, pretty much, you're always fine until you're not. Mayne, Mercurial, Virtue Chance, and Last Gasp. That's fine by me. And we're back in the Hamlet, and we will see what gets unlocked in this exciting turn. No long years may seek to separate them. Action and consequence will invariably have their dreadful reunion. Okay, intolerable. Actually, I should try and should try and get in character to do the voice. Intolerable. Clouds of mosquitoes and other less identifiable pests continue to descend upon the Hamlet with maddening persistence. Illness and irritation abound. And a new courtyard quest is available. I'm not sure if I'm going to be in a good place for it, but we'll have to see how that goes. Blacksmith is unlocked, the guild is unlocked, and that's going to probably be my saving grace before... Ooh. Ooh, that's nasty. It's a quick look. Alright, the courtyard's open. It's a short apprentice. Evidence of corruption. How I, wow, that's a new... Even, that's a new item. Plus 25 scouting chance in the Crimson Court. Negative 15% scare chance of surprise. Increased stress. Even the chief was in a... What is that? Great. Plus 25 damage versus bleeding. Versus bleeding? Okay. 3% crit versus bleeding. Oh, so it's increased damage for those that are bleeding. That could stack up really nicely on the Houndmaster. That's a really, really good curio. 
activate three throwing hives. I might need to do that quest, but we're going to have to save it until next time. Unfortunately, I'm going to need to look at my party first and foremost and see what I can do about getting a effective, strong, and salient group together. We have an occultist, a seeker, plague doctor, and a bounty hunter. I can take all of them, and I will, but let's just make sure. Yes, okay, weird reconstruction is part of your mix. That's just fine by me. Fight the abyss. One must chain blight, it. chain stun, incision, and battlefield medicine. That is a much better loadout as well. As much as you are a level zero, I will happily take you under my wing. Done and done. Ski. Laboratory than the blood-soaked battlefield. And a bounty hunter for a position one or two. Run caltrops. That that looks new. Caltrops. Bleed. Two for three rounds. Debuff speed and accuracy. That's pretty good. Reduce damage, so it's probably going to do like one damage. Crit mod, high. Okay. That looks like a pretty good ability. Beyond that, you have collect bounty and mark. Yeah, that's pretty complimentary and finishing. Alright. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely take you. Put you in my heavy hitter lineup. The thrill of the hunt. The promise of payment. Alright, and with the blacksmith among the we'll look first once to again. Upgrade you. Stands ready to make weapons of war. Not quite enough deeds to grab the armorsmith upgrade. Let's just do a run through and see whether I have the cash to afford any of this. All right, let's just press on, press on, and press on. I think I think I'm going to trade some busts for one deed. Actually, portraits. Right, it's always going to be excessive. Let's trade busts for two deeds. All right. Upgrade armor smithing as well. I just need sword, better dodge on these guys. Shield. Anything to prolong a soldier's life. More hit points and more dodge. That works just fine for me. There we go. Guild hall is also open, so there are some no upgrades mistake. to make. We will face ever greater threats. Our soldiers must be ready. Let's upgrade level 2. And start changing around these loadouts. I'm not sure if I'm going to have the money to do all the ones that I want. The key focus, though, is going to be taking care of mm, stress levels. So I have a healer now. I have Bows, the occultist. And I've got a good feeling about Bows. I've got a good feeling about him. So I'm going to grab... Oh, what will you do? You will only at the brothel for stress reduction. That's going to be expensive, but it is acceptable. Don't want you losing your mind. And normally I'll take care of you guys when you have stress of over 50 and you're at 60. Okay, I know that at 70, 70 is a potential to remove. Sometimes it's only 60. So that's the call I'm going to make. Uh, main net will miss a spot and be mercurial. I don't have the sanatorium unlocked yet, so dealing with stress is completely fine. This will limit my options, though, when it comes to upgrades. But that said, I don't have that many choices. I've got just under 10 grand. I currently do amazing amounts of upgrading. What I will do is upgrade Open Vein, which will give me... Uh, slightly reduced bleed resist. And, yeah, okay, that's pretty weak. But it's cheap, and we will take it. This does increased crit chance. Take that. I can leave those two alone for the moment, because I don't typically use them. On Reynold, I will drop an upgrade to Smite. I'm going to leave the rest of these alone, because again, it's pretty much a Smite that I use. Battle Heal is pretty compelling. Holy Lance is pretty compelling. Inspiring Cry is pretty compelling. And it is Inspiring Cry that I'm going to grab, because... I need some way of alleviating stress damage, and that is all of the money that I'm willing to spend at this stage. I'm probably going to leave things here for the moment, because we're getting close to the 40 minute mark, which is a pretty good length of video to have. Thank you guys so much for watching this. If you've liked what you've seen, hit that like button. I'll be putting out at least one video a day, every day. Not six, not twelve, at least one video a day, every day, five days a week. Once again, I'm Adum. Thank you so much for watching. I will catch you guys next time.